Nestled in the heart of Kampala is UBC TV, a place charged with a core value to inspire and transmit quality programming for national guidance. Now, over the years, this place has been a hub to many talented, grooming only the best on-air talent this country has got to offer. Now, this guest for this week is a special gentleman who is a news anchor called Michael Jordan Lukomwa, a gentleman who provides a public face to a range of programs. It is exactly 10 p.m. A very good evening to you tuned in to UBC TV. Welcome to our second edition of News Tonight. It's me, Michael Jordan Lukoma, with Mohamed Mugalu, our sign language interpreter. Let's have a look at the headlines. Jordan. Yes, <laughs> How are you? I'm not bad. How are you doing? Are you, are you always putting on suits? No. <laughs> it depends. Although, I would say... Mm. Like 60% of my time in a week, I have a suit on me. Well, what I can say, you look doper. I like the black suit. Thank you. How are you doing, man? Not bad. How has this, how are this how place been? Chilling. Chilling is great, man. And I'm glad to have you. So honored. It is my honor. It's my pleasure. Yeah. You, you're such an incredible show. news anchor. Thank you so And uh, how has this place been treating you ever since you arrived? UBC has not only been a workplace for me, but mm. I think the greatest training institution mm. my life has had mm. as an advantage, as an opportunity. Mm. Yes. Okay. I've worked and trained here. Okay. I can do anything in the media. I can write, I can talk, I can comment, I can do anything you can think of Yeah. as far as media work is concerned. The first time you joined, tell me about that experience. When was the first I time you joined? I joined UBC. My story has a lot of drama. <laughs> what happened? Tell me. I joined UBC in 2012. Woo! That's a long time. I came here to visit somebody. Mm. And in his office, they wrote a document. Mm. So I was asking him to give me an opportunity on TV. Mm. They wrote a document. The president had a reshuffle of RTCs. So he gave me a test of translating that. Yeah. I did it in just a few seconds. And he told me, you man. Was it like a demo? It, it was. No, 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 no. It was a document. Yeah. So he wanted me to translate it from English to Uganda mm. because it was on Star TV. Yeah. I did it in a few seconds. And he said, you man. People here struggle to do this for hours. You can do it. Tell me you were that sharp. Yes. So he told me, okay, come, mm. do recordings and see where I can put you. Okay. My interest, of course, was news. Yeah. I started coming and did a number of recordings. You can't believe. Mm. <laughs> my supervisor then was Dennis Blair Kalanzi. He was in charge of my recordings and supervising how I did it. Mm. And the manager was Dean Chibirige. He's the man that I visited. So he allowed me, mm. after seeing like two of my recordings, he allowed me to come on Star TV mm. and he gave me weekend news, Saturday, Sunday. It's funny because some people... Uganda that, bulletin. Some people that start out, they so, start out as interns. Exactly. Now, how do I cross from Uganda, from Uganda to English? Yeah. That's where the Mbaga Embata is. Yeah. How? <laughs> the evening I came, my first evening to go on air as a Uganda news anchor on Star TV. Yes. Yeah. The anchor of UBC uh, tonight, the 8 p.m. bulletin on UBC. Was Bali still alive exactly. then? Exactly. Wait. Yeah. I'm coming tonight. <laughs> so, the anchor that evening calls the editor, mm. Deo Habimana. Mm. Excuse me, I am in the saloon in the dry two minutes to the 8 p.m. bulletin and I cannot come. Deo ran mad. He mm. looked around. In the, during the day, I had asked him for a flash disk. Yeah in English, so yeah. probably in his mind, yeah. something came and he remembered I talked to a certain boy. Yeah. So he looked for me and told me, put on your jacket, jacket put on your jacket, put yeah. on your jacket. I wondered, God, I've just Did, come. Had you come with a jacket? Me had you, had yes. you come up with I had come to present Luganda News on yeah, TV yeah, yeah. that evening. Yeah. Deo Habimana grabbed me straight on air. He took me to the UBC. Please tell me you are not nervous. Of course I was. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this building is uh, state of the art. Yes. And it's one of the uh, luxury that UBC has. And yes, it's yes. also where you transmit most of your news. Yes. A lot of people are going to be excited to go behind the scene to see how this is done. So do you care to lead me in front? I can't. <laughs> the journalism bug, mm. when did it bite? Um, I think I was born to be a journalist. Kidding. Get out of here. No, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why. Mm. Back in the day, mm. when I got here, 
yeah. and started work, mm. I got to remember a number of things. That evening, I went on air the first evening. That the was first your night. very first opportunity. It brought mm. back a number of memories. I remember as a child, yeah. I used to have a lot of questions about how the man on TV would get into our TV at home. Yeah. How the man would get into our radio at home. Yeah. So I used to ask my mother a lot about that. So one evening I remember she even got pissed and told me, Wange, Gendo Some I think that was a proclamation of sending me into this field. Yeah. Yeah. And when I grew up in school I was so much into debates and things like that. Was the support system there? Since yes. your mom discovered you had that talent, what, did she support you in doing that journalism course, and pursuing course, that course? My mom was so supportive, but I lost her at an early age. Oh, sorry. Just in P5, that's when I lost her. And you know what comes up in families when you lose. My mother was having us on her own. When we lost her again, we had to cross to Mzee's family. And you know the changes that come around in such a situation. How did you survive? How did you get to wish for that? My dad is a parent. He has a number of us, over 25 of us. So, so you have 25 siblings? It definitely. Wow. And oh. uh, I'm the nine in my dad's line. There are so many people behind me. <laughs> and in front. Like, no, definitely I'm in front. So yeah. if it rains from somewhere, from in front, I'm safe. So if it does rain. <laughs> how, do, how do some of your siblings think about uh, your success? Uh, of course, many of them are very happy about it because we have people in different fields. We have lawyers, we have engineers. But I ended up in this field, and probably if there is anything to do with the media, I'm a consultant in my family. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this cannot go without being mentioned. The, the late Bali Francis, how did you guys come oh, in encounter? Now, yeah. That great evening, I joined this place with a cameraman, your friend called Elijah of Kenya. We came here the same day. So while seated at the reception, Bali Francis passed and said, how are you? You get that used to be his greeting, mm -hmm. and he said, "You people speak wrong English. That word is not one. How are you? No, it's there are three words. How are you?" And so particular in his grammar. That's how he used to greet. So yeah. he greeted us mm -hmm. when he entered his office. Elijah told me, "Nari smai ni yomsa ya inza nakuwa pita kwa wande na mbuzi na kwa." He had the excitement. So that's my first time to meet him. But I went to his office and talked to him, and when Dean Chibirige had allowed me to go on air. Now, that very evening I went on air to do English, yet I had come to do Uganda news. Mm. After my bulletin, the MD, that was Mr. Pochi Hika then, uh, Madame Doreen Indezi was the chief news editor, and the editor Dale were at the doorsteps of the studio. I got questions. How did you come? Who are you? Who mm. brought you? I pointed at Dale. Then the MD said, anyway, you read very well. He called Bali Francis. There is a young man here. Bali said, I've been watching him. So I'm referring him for training your side. We may need him. Were you intimidated? Of course, I was in fear. This was the MD, my dear. No, but uh, I mean, okay, the MDs are there, but mm. those are more for more people. But uh, Bali Francis. Yes. So with, with, with now, his I formally capability, now yeah. met him yeah. on assignment, yeah. on instruction for training. And I went for training. Uh, for one year as a Star TV employee, yeah. uh, that was in 2012, around June, up to June 2013. Then up to, around 20, June 2013, another group of people joined me uh, that now had Simon Mujisha, who is now in Parliament, uh, Rhoda Ngozi, my sister, you know her. Kija Ngoma. Ah. Although Kija was more senior than the rest of us here yeah, in yeah, the yeah. industry yeah, yeah. before all of us. So they all joined me and now we had the training yeah. for the English version. So I trained for the English version and as well the Luganda version. Okay, let us talk about fatherhood. Cause, um, but you were talking about the man, Bali Francis. The man, Bali Francis. That's probably the biggest celebrity Uganda has ever had in the media industry. Mm. Yes. He was a loving man. Okay. He had love first mm. for this profession, mm. for his what he did, and he loved to share with people his capabilities and the love for this job. That is how good, actually, the best gentleman I've ever met. What special attributes do you think you had that maybe caught the MD's eye or Bali Francis' attention to be like, I want to work with that boy? I think he's got something. What was that? Uh, je sais quoi. Mm. Uh -huh. I, I think I went on there 
You know, this was my first day on TV. I prepared a lot. You get? Now, here comes a coincidence of doing English, yeah. having prepared for a Uganda bulletin. So the anxiety to score. Yeah. Because the moment I went on air, people started calling on my phone. You know, people think you can pick and tell them, please, I'm on air. People started calling me. And John Byrne sent him with the coordinator. He came and said, Mwe, mulekali kumpeo. don't call him again. So I think the anxiety to score that finally I'm here. Probably I sounded very good that evening on my first chance to appear on air. So everyone was saying, okay, there's some young man here who can do what we want. Incredible. So when people started getting bigger jobs, the seniors then, when they started getting bigger jobs, of course, that's when I got ushered into their opportunities. Mm. The Farouk Kayondos of this world, the uh, Mulekatete went to TV Rwanda. Are those days. some of your role models? It, it, not even role models, but they were senior people here mm. who would tell you, excuse me, this is not right. Were you lucky to get some of their mentorship? Yes. Mm. I remember I had a disagreement. Okay, we didn't disagree. But I was hurt by one of the seniors. Her name is Emily Muebaze. She came and told me, you man, stop standing like a preacher on set. <laughs> and you kept, you are in you kept that on the back of your I mind up to now. I felt discouraged, you know. I said, yeah. I want to take our girlies and what and what. Now, recently, I yeah. was sent uh, to, to do a story about World Press Freedom Day last year. Yeah. I met her at Vision Group and she said, thank you. I sit at home and watch you. Yeah. I saw it on your face that you were unhappy with me that evening. So are you still unhappy? I watch you and you're performing very well and I feel... Developmental criticism. Yes. So let's talk about fatherhood. I mean, juggling the two, it can be so daunting when you have to work and at the same time become a father. Because I understand you're a father somewhere. I'm a father with two big men. One is called Arthur Louis Sekavida, the other one is Adrian Paul Kayongo. But it's just interesting. Well, you see, one advantage about having a family, it keeps you focused. Okay. I'm one man who will have to go home whether I want or not. Okay. <laughs> Every evening after work. So, so responsibility. Because I'll have to explain, besides the fact that I have to explain where I've been if I didn't go home immediately after work, again, I have some anxiety to meet some two people with whom I play, with whom we share their jokes and their interesting stories that have a lot of innocence and that are funny. Mm. So, you end up automatically balancing. There is no rocket science about it. The moment God gives you people around you, mm. you find a way of relating them. The moment, as long as you love them, you, you just find a way of embedding the two. Okay. So, now, when Mr. Jordan says that he's... When he says he promised to take me to the studio, this wasn't it. I'm sure it's more beautiful than this, where you anchor the news from. Somewhere above on the second floor, is it? Yes. yes. So uh, you're going to join us as we proceed to the studio. To my workplace. To your workplace. Yes. <laughs> It is exactly 10 p.m. A very good evening to you tuned in to UBC TV. Welcome to our second edition of News Tonight. It's me, Michael Jordan Lukoma, with Mohamed Mugalu, our sign language interpreter. Let's have a look at the headlines as we open the book. President Museveni has called upon Japanese investors to invest in the urban waste management. The Democratic Party has scoffed at FDC apology. So, this so is when, it. exactly when you hear the word studio, yeah, this is what we mean. As wow. far as, especially as far as news the is concerned, this is our studio. I, I can already feel the presence. Yes. 
These two cameras have a teleprompter each mm -hmm. that you connect it with the laptop or computer wow. and you, you, they, they enable you read as you communicate physically with your viewer. So that's now, how we do it. Now I can tell you guys that being on live television, every presenter can tell you it's no joke At because all. you have to deal with the nerves exactly. that go under it. Now today we are going to be fortunate enough to be... Uh, get a demonstration from the main man himself, one of the best <laughs> news anchors UBC has got to offer, uh -huh. to get to see how visually news is packaged. So um, once the director says, be honest with me, once the director says, action, what goes on behind your mind? Uh, first of all, you must, now a studio like this one, as good as the one we have, yeah. it has a clock, and you know, for example, my bulletin is 1 p.m. And sharp. the clock is just exactly. right there. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, uh, even in the absence of a uh, a director mm. uh, or with only your editor or even if the director is around the moment you see it is top of the hour that very time you have to be on air you just have to design your introduction mm. in your mind to the person watching you depending on the situation in the country today it has rained it yeah. is kind of a cold day yeah. uh, the other day we lost professor Sibambi. yesterday yeah. uh, was something else the yeah. other day we had the uh, state of the nation address yeah. so you design an introduction yeah. that puts somebody in the news okay mode. what would you say is the best quality of a good news anchor Let, let's proceed okay Let, let's proceed over. Uh, for, for, for. this is where you uh, normally do the lunchtime news? Exactly. This mm. is where we know I normally do our lunchtime news. Mm. and uh, With an iPad. Uh, of course, people should know this is our new studio. Yeah. Yes. I started news in some old studio, but this is a new one that is magnificent, state-of-the-art, state with the art. all that you would think of, the things that we see when we go for training elsewhere. Did I tell you I trained in Korea as well? No, you missed that detail? Oh, no. How did you miss that detail? Of course, an opportunity came between Ministry of ICT and UBC, mm. and... I was among the lucky people. What was the main thing you learned? From I Korea? learned that the main thing was broadcasting environment. So I visited those big studios, news studios, and we got a chance to get a feel of what news means uh, to the Koreans. That is in South Korea, mm -hmm. Seoul. Mm -hmm. So I was there for training and returned. Okay. Yes. Now, I asked you before, mm -hmm. what could be the best attribute of a very a incredible very news anchor? incredible news anchor. The, fa the first thing is their audibility, physical. They must be audible. Enough. Does that come with confidence? A, high, a lot. Mm. But where does the confidence come from? It is also given birth. What gives the confidence to a news anchor is the news person in him. You get? Is this a person who would choose to watch a news channel for foregoing music and all that other things yeah. for a news channel whole day mm. someone who you ask whom will tell you between uh, the war between china and u.s right now mm. uh, what is happening between china and u.s you the kind of a person who has such a in on their fingertips mm. that is the first that's what gives birth to the confidence that whatever you will talk about this person knows mm. even if he misses a script here at least he can formulate or design a paragraph about that story even without that script here. Obviously, because somebody may print for you mm. and he misses out a, 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 a script. But the technical people have that story ready mm. and your running order tells you that's the next story. So a person who has the capacity to mention that story off head, mm. that is the attribute. Mm. Now to a person of course, who has never worked with a media, pass, uh, media place or yeah. media fraternity, will never know the pressure that goes behind the scenes packaging this news and bringing it together uh, to be translated on TV. Mm -hmm. But uh, to you, how special is the UBC bulletin? Yes, like I was telling you... Mm. Uh, I think we can have a seat because... Uh, every, every, yeah. every media house in their DNA, right here. Yeah. in their design, have a role to play, a specific role to play. Now, UBC is a national broadcaster. A national broadcaster has a candid role of defending the image of that particular nation wherever. That's why they are th those international big media houses. You can never see a dead body of their soldier of that particular country on the screen, on their screens. You can't. Do you think we are objective enough? News is informative. The, the word objective may be. Actually, you have to be objective, but the word object, the objectivity must serve an interest. Mm. Now, for a national broadcaster defending the image of that particular country, that is the number one interest. 
Now, that's why if I'm to describe or define UBC News, our news is not exaggerated. And actually, it is not supposed to be exaggerated because it's for national good. Mm. That's good because sensationalized, uh, sensationalized stories it's just can, that. Be, can be... UBC News sometimes. is not supposed to be exaggerated because it's for national good. Whatever has happened, we just report it the way it is because it is for the national good. We do it for the national good. You guys wrote... You so that's the special team. thing about our news. So you and Roda have sort of created this great bond mm. on television. How has it been working with her? Yes. Roda joined me later in 2012 and we got paired in 2015. But her mate was Simon Mujesha. So when Simon left, <laughs> the height that could match was mine and hers. So that's when we got a pair. I think it was around last year, 2017. But because we had had a working relationship earlier on, we were in Bali's classes together, yeah. so we got along easily. Yeah. Yes. So how do you complement each other? Um, while on set? While on set, she, is, she has the power of the voice. She has... No, she does. She is a lady. Yeah. You know how lady ca ladies can attract attention. Uh, of course, we get that from the viewers yeah. as a pair. Then, I have a gift of the voice too. <laughs> Any last message you want to convey before we wrap up the first part of this incredible episode? Um, I think my last message would go to people that would love to, be, to join the media. Media is fun, but media is work as well. Work is serious. That's why you have related with me and people that related with me know me as this happy man, uh, this man who will crack a joke mm. whenever he meets you. Mm. But they will tell you, that's now work, you get. Media is fun, but it's work. If you have a story to work on, mm. and it has to go on air. Now, just to take an imagination. Over 35 reporters go to the field, yeah. and whatever they gather there, yeah. it's you, you are the last man to make it sensible to the somebody waiting for it at home on their screens. Okay. Actually, the anchor has more pressure at work course in that perspective than yeah. anyone because whatever all the other 40 30 people story. have gathered yeah. i have to make it sensible make it the news mm. somebody at home is waiting to watch all right now check this out jordan we are moving on to the second part of chilling and this time we are going to go to our location that's the bmk cafe and i'm going to have a treat with you and with the help of uh, the uh, BMK Cafe's barista, Abdul, he's going to teach us how to make this incredible tropical coffee mixed with ice cream. I'm and telling I'm a you. fan of coffee, by the way. They should prepare. <laughs> it's going to be fun. It. It's going to be fun. So please don't miss <laughs> any of this action. I can't wait. Next week on the second part of Chilling. Thank you, Jordan. Mm, you're welcome. And uh, thank you for being an incredible guest. But you're sticking with me on I'm the honored. second part. Thank you so much. All right. Follow our social media outlets. Go on Chilling UBC TV. And please follow Jordan on Facebook. Of course. That's Mike Adu Jordan Lukumwa. And Lukumwa MJ on Twitter. Lukoma MJ on yes. Twitter. Mm. What about Facebook? Facebook, Lukoma Michael Jordan. Do you have an Instagram too? No, I'm just on Facebook and Twitter. Such a yeah, I don't have too much brother. time to be everywhere. I can only be on Facebook and Twitter. Oh, okay, see you. <laughs> yes, I would also love to thank you so much for the yeah. opportunity to feature yeah. on this show. Yeah. It's a very beautiful show. Yeah. It opens up a number of things. Yeah. Yes, I've gotten an opportunity to be here. Yeah. Yes, I would come to this place only to eat or events and things like that. I've never gone this far. Yes, it is an opportunity, but I'd love to throw a word of thanks to UBC, the corporation that gave me the opportunity. That's where you found me to suggest this kind of an idea. And all the people that have been part of my journey, my editors, Nalongo, Deo, Javiona, um, all the people that have trained me and they pay tribute to the late ballet practice.